Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here from Google I.O. 2017. And I.O. is definitely a, a little bit different every year, but it's a developer conference for people who use Google software and for all the developers of apps that run on that software. So while there is no new hardware, there's no Pixel 2 or anything crazy like that happening here, there is a lot of googly software, a lot of machine learning and image recognition and all that fun stuff that will eventually make it into the devices that we have now. So there's definitely some stuff to pay attention to. This is my top five announcements from Google I.O. 2017. So number one is Google Lens. And I had a feeling something like this would make a comeback. So so much of like what I said, the stuff at this conference is stuff like computer vision and machine learning and image recognition. And this is a perfect example of a culmination of all of that. So Google Lens is a new capability that will start showing up in Assistant and Photos and others that'll let you point your camera at an object and get more information about that object. Now, if that sounds familiar, that's because it is. We've had stuff like Google Goggles from way back in 2010, believe it or not, and then stuff in between like Bixby, et cetera. But the technology has gotten a lot better since 2010. So this is actually almost a completely different product. Now Google Lens and Assistant is so good, you can point it at a flower and it'll tell you not only that it's a flower, but what kind of flower it is. Or if you're walking down the street and point lens at a restaurant, since Google Maps knows where you are, image recognition is pretty easy to overlay info about the place you're looking at. And even more awesome, you can point lens at the bottom of a router, that sticker, you know, where it says the username and the password and the SSN and it'll log you in instead of having to type it all out. So Google Lens looks awesome, and while it's not out right now, I think if it ends up looking and working as well as it did in those videos, then it should be pretty dope. So number two is Google Assistant, and first things first, Google Assistant is now available on the iPhone. So it's, it's on my iPhone. I got it in the App Store. You can get it too right now. And this is the exact same Assistant. It works the exact same way as it does on my Pixel or any other Android phone, so that's awesome. And there's even some iPhone-specific optimization since obviously you can't hold down the home button to get to it. That's where Siri is. So you make a widget to put right next to your home screen to launch the Assistant to get right to talking to it. You can scroll up to see your history of things you've asked for in the past, which is cool. And then you can also even type questions to it. So if you're in a quiet place and you don't have the space to ask things out loud to it, you can type what you want to know and hit send and it'll answer. Hopefully that's coming to the Android version soon. And then the other news is now Google Assistant will hopefully be in way more places really soon thanks to the SDK becoming available to third party developers. So the example they used on stage was literally pulling up Google Assistant and telling it you just want some Panera. And instead of it telling you what Panera is near you, it actually pulls up the menu, lets you pick exactly what you want to eat, and orders delivery. So that's pretty awesome. So we're starting to see Google Assistant in a lot more places. It went from being this pixel only thing to being an Android only thing to being much more widely available. And that's kind of what Google I.O. is all about. So number three is Android O. And you're probably, you're probably already familiar with Android O because I already did a video about it. You probably watched my top five features on Android O video. If you haven't, I'll link that below. That's where a lot of the main stuff is. But at IO, they've announced that it's graduated from a developer preview to a beta. So now it's available in the beta channel. Anyone with a Pixel or a Nexus can download it and you can check out a couple of new features that have also made it to this version. One thing I really like is the picture in picture mode, which is sort of like while you're doing one thing, you can continue doing that in the background and move to another thing and just hit the home button to continue multitasking. You get a floating window that continues your background tasks. So while you're watching a YouTube video, you can hit home and open up a notes app and start taking notes while the video plays. And when you're done, you can literally just swipe it away. There's also something called notification dots, kind of like something you would see in iOS where you have those little badges for your notification icons. Notification dots are the same way. They'll indicate on an app on your home screen where you have notifications. So to check that notification, you can either pull down in the tray like normal, or you can actually long press that app icon on the home screen to look at it, and that'll give you the same information. So Android O is coming along pretty nicely. We should see the full final version of it and probably get a name for it. Uh, sometime this summer, but it's got a couple other little features like improved autofill, uh, better looking emojis that are redesigned, uh, all kinds of faster boot times, things like that. So, But if you want to see the full five best new features about Android O, of course, you should watch that video. So number four is Google Photos. So you may or may not use this, but the improvements to it in the last year have gotten really good and they're pretty much all in the space of machine learning and AI. So it already organizes your photos just by things it's recognized in them. It recognizes the faces, the locations, places you took them, the landmarks in the background, all sorts of things like that. Now it's just making that information more available to you. So there's something called suggested sharing where it recognizes faces in your photos and essentially suggests that you share those photos with the people that are in them. There's also shared libraries which can automatically share every photo you take of your kids, for example, with your partner. And possibly the coolest one is some automatic photo manipulation. Now not, this isn't just like the little filters it adds to your photo. Apparently, if this works well, 
It'll let you literally remove obstructions from the front of the photo. The example they showed on stage was incredible. I hope it works that well, but again, we have to see. All right, so number five, last but not least, is Google Home. And again, you may or may not have one of these, but it's getting some improvements that are improving it well too. One is called proactive assistance. So you know how Google now sometimes gives you little notifications telling you there's a traffic incident on your normal route or something that it kind of thinks you might want to know ahead of time? Well, now Google Home will also be able to do that, but since it doesn't have a display, it'll do that with the lights on the top. So now when you see it lighting up by itself, you can just ask what's up and it'll tell you that news. There's also hands-free calling coming to Google Home, which I think is pretty awesome and also long overdue. And now it can even start showing responses to questions that require a visual response on your TV or your phone. So before it wouldn't make sense to ask Google Home a question like, show me my calendar, because there's no display, obviously. But now since it's smart enough to connect to your TV or your phone, it will show that response on a device with a display, which is pretty convenient. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching our little recap of Google I.O. 2017. Feel free to share this with other people who you think might wanna know what was announced today and don't wanna watch the two hour keynote, or you can watch the two hour keynote. I'll link that below as well. But uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace. All right, I want to ask you both. What was, you've seen like the entire day one keynote now, you have a bunch of new announcements. What was your favorite new thing from I.O. so far? You start. Favorite, favorite new thing. Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, for me, it's Google Lens. Yeah. Uh, you know, I love the fact that, you know, we today see a lot of stuff and that's how humans take in a lot of information. So to be able to point things at stuff you're interested in yeah. and finding more about it, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Android Go. You know, I have two actually. One consumer one and one developer one. Is that cheating? That's yeah, kind of. It's kind of cheating. I do what I want. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Android Go. You know, it's it's a new configuration of Android for the one gig or less crowd. I think it's important. You know, and we really want to make that experience great. And then Kotlin, which is a developer thing. It's a new language. That is huge. But, yeah, you saw, did you hear the crowd? That was the loudest. That was the loudest. That was the loudest. That was the loudest. This is a developer conference, so you get the you get the crowd going with that. Absolutely. Those are my favorites. Awesome.